Joining us now, CNN senior national correspondent Sarah Seinder, legal and political analyst Terry Austin, and Chris Whipple, author of the upcoming book, The Fight of His Life Inside Joe Biden's White House. Sarah, I want to start with you because you've done extensive reporting on both the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers. This spokesperson, Jason Van Tattenhoff, worked for the Oath Keeper as an employee like years ago. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I'm curious what you think he might provide because what is important here, according to Whitney and according to Jamie Raskin and others, is this connective tissue between the White House and the Oath Keepers. So what do you get from him? Look, I think what you get from him is how much uh, the leader of the Oath Keepers has an influence on the others. I think you're going to start seeing, maybe we'll hear from him, does he send out directives? Are they uh, responded to? Are people going to say, yes, we're going to do this? Because the government has Stuart Rhodes as one of the nine defendants who are facing the toughest charges you can face, right, in this case. And so Stuart Rhodes has said all these things both before and after uh, on online. You can find him talking about going after the government. You can talking about the fact that he believed that Joe Biden was not the president and that the president must do something and we must do something uh, as a group. Uh, but there's also all these uh, messages on signal being sent from him and others to each other, talking about things like uh, pre-combat inspections, uh, very militaristic language about what they were going to do on January 6th. And then you have, you just heard from Whitney Wilde, uh, one of the co-conspirators bringing uh, things like weapons, um, things like explosives to a hotel in preparation for this. So he might show some connective tissue between all of these people and the power that perhaps the leadership has over some of the members. Benny Thompson, the, the chairman of the committee, set the bar on what they're trying to achieve here at the very beginning of this series of hearings. Here's what he said. Are there going to be witnesses that describe actual conversations between these extremist groups and anyone in Trump's orbit? Yes. There will be? Yes. I, I, obviously, you'll have to go through the hearings, but uh, we have a number of witnesses who come forward uh, that people have not talked to before uh, that will document a lot of what was going on uh, in the Trump orbit uh, while all of this was occurring. Terry, how important is it that there's a strong link, that there is very strong coordination? It's a big, important issue because that is how the DOJ is going to be able to bring charges. What the select committee is doing now is gathering the information. They themselves can't bring charges, but the DOJ can. And if we can establish a link between Trump, his aides, and all of the Oath Keepers and the other organizations who had these extremist acts, then we can probably bring charges against Trump and his aide. So they have to make those links. It'll be forensic evidence, it will be testimony, it will be videotapes, and all of that is going to help the DOJ bring charges. They can bring seditious conspiracy charges, they can bring fraud charges. So there are a number of things they can do, particularly obstruction of a process, because they try to stop that electoral slate. So there's a lot they can do, and putting those links together is going to help the DOJ actually bring those charges. Chris, what do you think the committee needs to do tomorrow, and how often will we hear the name Roger Stone? <laughs> well, I don't know about Roger Stone, but just think about Trump saying on national television about the Proud Boys, stand back and stand by. I mean, it all fits, doesn't it? And, it, you know, so I agree that this is potentially devastating tomorrow's testimony, um, because if you can connect a Trump uh, to a premeditated plan to launch a violent mob on the Capitol, then, you know, game, set, and match. But in another sense, I think that what happens tomorrow almost doesn't matter when you consider what we already know. What we know is that Donald Trump and Mark Meadows and others were told in no uncertain terms that they lost the election. They went ahead and tried to subvert the election anyway. They, they launched a mob to attack the Capitol. They knew the mob was heavily armed and they didn't care how many people died. Now, I'm not a lawyer, uh, but I think I do know something about previous presidential scandals. And compared to this, you know, Richard Nixon and H.R. Haldeman, their crimes look like parking violations. Like parking violations. That's saying something. I want to talk about Steve Bannon because we learn now that he's willing to testify. We should be very clear because he says he's testifying 
because uh, Donald Trump has told him that he's waiving privilege, executive privilege, that to be clear, actually never pertain to him. I'm right? waving the right to dunk a basketball. <laughs> I can't dunk a basketball. It's the same thing. That's like the legal analysis. It's sort of like if there was no basketball, right. though, right, at all. Um, and uh, yes. Yeah, it's fascinating, and it's also preposterous, as you say. I mean, Trump had absolutely no authority to waive executive privilege. Bannon didn't, wasn't working at the White House. Executive privilege has to uh, yield when there's evidence of criminality. Um, and you also have to wonder if what in the world can Steve Bannon say? Well, so what to is he exonerate doing? Exonerate Donald Trump. I, so I think what, what, what do you so see him doing here? It's, it's total desperation on the part of Trump. He's watching himself get killed every at every hearing on national television and wants to throw something against the wall. And so this is the the equivalent of rolling a, a hand grenade into that hearing room. Uh, but I think it blows up on Trump and Bannon. I mean, the, and and for sure, we know that Bannon's not going to be put on live television. Mm -hmm. They're going to depose him first. So it's it's really, you know, when I heard it, I thought of the old McEnroe phrase, you cannot be serious. Why, why are they sending Steve Bannon in? Anybody's guess. Terry, does this do anything for his legal case? I mean, he faces this trial on criminal contempt in a week. Does this mean that goes away? It could possibly mean they might have some sort of compromise. It's two separate issues. The contempt charges, there are two of them, two counts. Those are still going to stand. He faces $100 up to... Uh, you know, days in prison, up to a year, frankly. And whether or not he testifies is not going to affect that. But he could reach some sort of agreement with the DOJ that if he testifies, then he will have these charges dropped against him. But they have serious evidence against him for these charges because he totally ignored the subpoena back in September. And so whether or not he agrees to come before the committee now really doesn't matter because he did defy that subpoena and they have those charges against him. But it can't hurt if he testifies. Let's remind people what Steve Bannon said on his program on January 5th. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. Just understand this. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. It's not going to happen like you think it's going to happen. Okay. It's going to be quite extraordinarily different. And all I can say is strap in. The war room, a posse. You have made this happen, and tomorrow it's game day. So strap in. I mean, Terry, he's going to be asked about that. How do you see that going down? Absolutely. And he wants to testify in public, but he better testify behind closed doors because the answer to that question is really going to implicate him. And he may just very well take the fifth. He knew something was going to happen. What was he talking about? And that's exactly what the committee wants to know. He knew that people were probably bringing weapons. He knew that people were going to go to the Capitol. There was going to be an insurrection. And he's going to have to come up with an answer. And that answer is definitely going to implicate him. So I think we're going to see him talk about some issues that don't implicate him. But for other issues, I do think if he does testify, he's going to have to take the fifth. So let's go back to what we're going to see tomorrow and this testimony surrounding the Oath Keepers and this idea of the connection. You've done reporting yeah. on the Oath Keepers. What were they doing in Washington around those days? Who were they with? We know they were near around Roger Stone. What does this all lead to? Yeah, I mean, it is, again, they're looking for connective tissue. Uh, they're looking for direct connection between groups like the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys. And there is some video evidence that we have all seen of uh, members, and especially one member who is charged in this case of seditious conspiracy, who is standing right there with Roger Stone, um, Robert Minuta. And, and all of these people who have been charged, by the way, have pleaded not guilty. But there are three members of the Oath Keepers who have pleaded guilty to seditious conspiracy, the strongest charge that has been brought. Um, by the federal government. And so it's interesting because I'm sure they're getting some information potentially from those people who pled, um, but it's the connective tissue and whether or not they can prove that there was direct connection between uh, people like Roger Stone to the White House, to the Oath Keepers, to the Proud Boys, 
telling them what to do or where to go or that they knew of their plans um, and did nothing or were encouraging their plans. Um, it's very interesting um, that Bannon, by the way, just going back to him, that, you know, it's what, about a week until there's supposed to be a jury selected for his case. Um, that seems a little suspicious if you look at it on its face. And Stuart Rhodes, the leader of the Oath Keepers, has also said that he would testify, um, but he wants to make sure he does it publicly. And, and some of this, I think a lot of people are suspicious as to whether they're going to go out there and really try and make Donald Trump look good um, by defying, you know, maybe they say one thing in his opposition and then they go out in front of the public and say this whole other uh, thing. And so that's a fear as well for a lot of people. Right. Sarah, Terry, Chris, thank you all so much for being with us sure. this morning.